Good morning. I hope you're doing well. So, I've I haven't done a Vue.js stream in a long time because I've been focusing on backend and some Python projects more recently from Free Code Camp. So, I figured it was about time to do another Vue stream and I got this question in the chat about just some filtering and searching or how to filter and search. Um, I don't know if you can see it too well, but I'm going to build this out in the Vue.js interface. Hey JLo, Kisanth, how are you? Um, yeah, I'm going to build this out in a Vue.js interface really quickly and as I go, I'm going to add in filtering of data by category and then also a search field and I haven't done it in a little while in Vue.js so it's going to be uh, a fun small project that I should be able to finish in the next hour. So what I did already is basically I created this um, repo, this Vue.js repo because that always takes a minute to do. So all I did was basically, uh, where is it? <laughs> view create. So I just ran view create. This is like a basic view three repo. There's not much going on here other than Vue.js itself. So I'm going to get started in there in a second. The next thing that I already did was generate mock data from Mockaroo. So if you haven't seen this site, Mockaroo.com, it is awesome. You can generate, you know, as many rows as you want of data in the format that you want. And they have all kinds of options to generate fake data. So for the image, I can actually get a uh, base64 image uh, URL, date times, just almost any kind of data. They have, well, let me get rid of that. They have a lot of 157 different types of data that you can pre-fill there. So I already got the mock data. One thing I did forget to do was actually put it in the repo here. So I'm going to do that. And it should only take me a minute. I'm doing it off camera so you don't see all my files. Yeah, I've been using Makaru for years to generate test data and it's awesome okay i have mock data.json putting it in here and okay it's almost there i just have to drag it into several nested folders i'm trying to see where my, where's my view there we go Okay, V3, and this is the filtering, here we go. Okay, it showed up here. All right, so I have mockdata.json. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put this in my source folder so I can use it in the app. And then I haven't touched anything else about Oops, the app here. Also, let me just open up this mock JSON. So this is a hundred rows of JSON. ESLint, uh, we'll use, okay, that's fine. ESLint is good. Um, yeah, so that's what the JSON looks like. And I'm gonna be, I probably didn't need a hundred rows, but just for filtering, purposes and searching it will probably be nicer to have more rows okay so actually the first thing that I'm going to do is split this up uh, just in case I need to chain things onto here later it's nicer okay so I have my main.js I should run the app so let me do npm run serve and it'll take a minute to build because it's the first time that I'm running this one. Okay, so I don't need fake data anymore. Done with that. And I did 
start this repo, which I haven't pushed to it yet. Mangoro dates are for which format file download? Um, you mean the actual date time? I got the dates and date time here. Um, I think you can do timestamp and some others. Yeah, our, my created at dates. Is that what you're asking about? I figured this is just easy to display on the front end without having to parse it at all. All right. Or the format file download. You can do any format. I'm not sure what you're asking. But I, yeah, I do. I got JSON just so I could easily read it. Okay, I need to set up, I have this empty repo for my view project. So, oh no, my server's already running. All right, I'll wait to hook that up then. And let me access my view app and make sure it's running then. Localhost 8080. Let me zoom in a little bit. Actually here, this is zoomed out for some reason. That's good. Okay, so it's running just fine. Now, if you, well, it's not up here anymore, but basically I'm going to create, um, just display the posts in a list, just like any blog. You don't need to see a picture. Um, or like a list of blog posts here, and then a list of categories on the right or on the left. So uh, let me go ahead and do that. Um, hello world. Okay, so let me have two components. I'm going to call this one posts.view. And then I'll have... Uh, I guess I'll have filters or something like that dot view. Okay. And template will be uh, filters. Actually, this is going to drive me crazy. So right now it's set to four spaces. So I was just doing Python in here. Um, and that's my default for my user. But I want this to be two spaces. And I just want to do it real quick for my whole workspace. So uh, command or control comma, I can get into my VS Code settings. And here it is, the tab size. I'm changing it in workspace so it doesn't affect all my other projects. But I'm going to change it to two. Okay, so that's good. And now that should change. Yeah, that changed all my empty files to two as well. Okay, so here I'll just put um, some kind of title filters. And I'm going to add on to that later. And then Just use editor config. Okay. It was just easy enough to change in there. Doesn't this... Oh, no. Um, okay. What was I doing? I, okay. I have template, so I'm going to do posts here. It's nice that I can just return multiple DOM elements without thinking about it now. So I'll just loop through the posts after here. Um, let's see. So now I, I'm going to change my app around, get rid of all this boilerplate stuff. And I'm going to display, let's see. I'm going to have a div that will display filters. I'll just put them on the left. It doesn't really matter. And then Oops. Close that. And then I'm doing the div so I can uh, have a nice layout across the page. Posts. Okay. 
All right, so now I have filters and posts. I'll get rid of, or I guess I can just change this one because I'm importing uh, filters and posts instead. So filters and then uh, let's see. Posts. All right, get rid of that component and I'll do filters and posts. All right, that looks good. Let me get rid of these extra styles down here. Though I might just do in file styling for this. Hello world component. Okay, there we go. Uh, I was thinking about importing a design framework, but just because I like to not do any design work if I can help it. But I think I'm just going to try to design it myself. So let's do class. All I want is the filters to be to the left and the posts to be to the right. That shouldn't be that hard. All right. So class is, what should I call this? I guess I'll call this um, if I'm making my own design framework, I'll call it column three and following a bootstrap like naming convention and class would be half for half the screen, then just give it 50% width. Okay, that's fine. If I want to change it later, I can. All right, so um, let me style. I'm down here at the bottom. Let me zoom in one. Might be too big. All right, so let me style half here. And hey. Thanks, eh? Thanks for the follow. How are you? Um, what kind of filters do you mean? Or do you... I'm going to filter through data. So I have some mock data here. And I'm basically, just like a blog or a site like that, I'm going to be filtering and searching through this data. Alright, so Hoff. Hey, version. Thanks for the follow. Um, let's see, I'm getting sidetracked. So half, can I do just with 50%? And then I would need to float or something. If I need more than half or third classes, that's when I pull in bootstrap. Okay. Hey, Aslam doctor. It's good to see you again. Well then, I want, don't I want a wrapper that has flexbox class container? Yeah, I think that's the best option. Man, I get so used to using a design library. Now I have to think for a second. Alright, so container, uh, let's see. You need to control the display. Don't use float. Yes. Um, let's see. I want to do, well, first display flex. And then I already have the flex direction. So I need, well, let me see if that works actually. Yeah, that works. And then I don't, I don't need half then, right? Do I need half? Uh, yeah, I do. Okay. That's fine then. That will work for now. And then... Um... I probably want... Well, let me do... I probably want some kind of margin on these, so... Let me just take it away from the edge. So maybe I'll do margin or no I'll just do a, a whole margin around the container here 
So margin, 20 pixels, there. This is view three. Write styles in the browser to see changes on the fly. Yeah. And I usually do that at work. Um, I don't know why, I'm just doing it in here now. Hopefully that's all the styles I need to write. Although I'm going to have to display the blog posts here. I'm also losing my voice, one second. Okay, and feel free to backseat. That's the point of this as well. Okay, I need filters, posts. All right, so I, let me go ahead and make the, actually I don't even have a list. I have the mock data, but I don't have a list of filters. So I'm gonna have to generate that. So let me go ahead and display the posts since I already have that in the mock data here. So let me see. Um, well, I need the script tag. And I can do, if I import mock data from mock data.json, I should be able to just use it as it is without parsing it. So let me create a data method here and say turn the object and now I'm going to do posts. Posts is mock data. And that should be a list of all the mock data. Then all I would have to do here is how do I want to display this? I guess I'll just use a div element and I'll do v4 uh, post in posts. And I do need a key, but each item, each array item has an ID that I generated. So I'm going to use that. So post.id as a unique key. I'll leave that like it is for right now. Close this div. And now, let's see. I'll display, what do I want inside of this? Um, let me just display, if I look at the data, I don't know, I have category, title. I guess I should display the title and description, maybe? Okay, so let me do h2 with post.title and close that. And then I used to have kite on my computer to do like the AI autocomplete, but it wasn't running very well. So hopefully when I get a new computer, I can get that again. Okay, post.description. And yeah, one thing I didn't think about is that category, there could be more than one category. Also, these are kind of, I don't know, these are construction categories. That was the only option. So like HVAC, electrical, oh well. Um, if I generate more data, I'll make it a little bit better. Um, but it's a good placeholder for now. All right, this is my fake data. Um, basically, the title is a type of plant and the description is lorem ipsum. So now what I want to do is take all of the categories and first of all I want to make sure there's more than one of some of these so let me grab HVAC and search 
Okay, there are two HVACs. That's good. Um, RF shielding. Okay, there are four RF shieldings. Alright, so I'm going to... So one, one thing I could do is take out all of is parse through this file and automatically get the categories and make a list. Or I could just take like two of these right now. Like maybe HVAC and something short. Overhead doors or something like that. Um, and then just try to get the filtering working. So I think I'm gonna do that. Have you done the get? Oh, Copilot? No, I, I've been meaning to sign up for it. Oh, cool. Yeah, I figured they probably wouldn't let me into the beta yet anyway, because there's probably a whole bunch of people waiting. But yeah, I am excited about it. It's going to make development so much faster. Okay, filters. So, I need, yeah, well first I need a list of filters here. So, let me go ahead and create that. Uh, let's see, data, and return, this will be filters, and let me make a list of filters, just with the two items right now. So, I'll do HVAC, and there, and now I can... I'll just display these in paragraphs. So uh, let's see. V4 filter in filters. Key. I'll just do the keys filter. They should all be unique. All right. And now filter there. <laughs> yes, it's VS Code only. Oh, okay. Yeah, I haven't read the specifications. Okay, so now... Uh, now I need to make... When I click on one of these filters, I want to filter the posts here. So, and actually... The... Let me get rid of this. So the posts file that's actually displaying the post. It has to know about the filtered post. So I'm going to have to, uh, since app.js is the parent of both filters and posts, I'm going to have to store the posts in here so that filters, because I'm not using any other state management, it's just the components. So I'm going to pass a function into filters from the parent. Um, and let's see, I'll call it filter posts equals filter posts. And then into posts, I'm going to pass the posts. So posts equals posts. And these could be all the posts or they could be filtered posts. So I'm going to have to move them out of posts into the parent. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna, well, first pull that out and then go here. And now it's app.js. This file's on the same level as mock data, so I don't need to go up a directory. And let me take this. Actually, I'm not gonna need data at all anymore, so let me just take the whole data or delete it, yeah. Okay, so now I have the posts in here. They're not being filtered yet. Um, and now I need to pass them in as a prop, so instead of having it on data here, I'm getting it from the parent, so I'm going to set props 
and I'll just do it as an array. So posts, and I'm accepting posts from the parent. So this should work the same way as it did before. Google Translate. Oh no, it's, it's trying to translate my lorem ipsum. Okay, so that works exactly the same way. That's good. And in the parent, now I can create that function. What was that function? Filter posts. Yeah, so let me create that. And UJS is really enjoyable to use. Okay, so filter posts, I'll do, oops, this keyboard. Okay, uh, filter posts, I will take the posts and filter it by category. So when I click on a category, I should pass in the category name here. So I'm passing in the category name, and then somehow I'm gonna have to filter the posts by that. So I'm going to do this.posts equals this.posts. This shouldn't be that bad. Dot .filter. Yes, I did hook up my stream deck. I have six buttons. Wait, can you see it? Oh, wait, where's my camera? There. See? Yeah. I don't know if you can see them, but I've been playing around with it. Um, there are a couple things I need to, so I do have a couple websites opening some, uh, what is this called? Oh, Streamlabs. So basically there are a few things I need to update in Streamlabs to get the rest of this working. It is pretty. Thank you. I've been wanting to get one for a long time. Um, okay. I have this dot post equals this dot post dot filter and then post. Also, one thing I found I just found out on the stream deck is you can do folders. So it this one only has six buttons, but you can make one of them a folder that will give you extra buttons. So you could have a whole bunch of commands that are just inside of folders, which is really cool. Mega zoom, that sounds cool. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Okay, this dot post dot filter. So I want to filter uh, by the post category. Post dot category equals uh, cat name. Okay, and this should filter the post just how it is right now. Yes, nested buttons are awesome. Um, let's see if this works. I have to hook this up. I'm passing it into the filters component, so I have to hook it up in here. And, oh yeah, I need to, let's see, data, I need props to access that function. So let me do, oh, let me just do it as a list. Um, filter posts and now when you click on one of these so I can nest a span inside a paragraph yeah right or no why don't I just do the paragraph I can do it on click uh, let me put this on multiple lines okay I need you to help me one project only about Vue.js. If you post it in my Discord, then yeah, I can take a look and maybe I want to stream on that topic or something. Uh, Goffy says, have you tried the composition API? I like it more than options. Finally got rid of this. I think it has it, its place. Yeah, I've tried it out. Um, it's just the options is so easy when I'm working on projects, especially with um, junior developers is really easy to read and reason about. Um, let's see. I've been thinking about doing a project entirely in the composition API. We'll see. 
So I need an on click here. I'm getting my. What am I doing? I've been working in React and now View, and it's all getting mixed up in my head. Okay, so I'll do an at click and let's see. I'll have to do. I'll just do filter posts and then I need to pass in the filter here. And that should filter. Now, oh, let me refresh this page. Option. No, I don't want Google Translate. Um, options is so much better. Composition is way over hyped. Okay. Yeah, some people like composition, some people don't. Yay! Wait, why doesn't overhead doors work? Oh, I think it's just slow right now. Or there, maybe there's an error, let me see. But I think I'm just lagging. Yeah, let me refresh it again. Oh, I know. Uh... Bye, Jared. Have fun at work. Good luck. I know why. So basically, it only works the first time. So now it filtered correctly. But now, once it filters the first time, my posts are forever only the filtered options. So then if I filter it again, I'm only filtering off the filter ones. So when I filter, I'm going to have to reset to the original data before I filter every time. So I'd have to do this dot posts equals mock data just to make sure. And that should fix the filtering options. No. Yeah. Yay, the filters work. <laughs> Gwen needs a computer. Yes, I do. Um, it's coming. I've been saying that for a long time, but it's coming. Okay. Oh, yeah. The filtering is working. And now I want to be nice if I could style this a little bit too. But, oh, yeah. Well, first of all, I need some kind of option to reset to all posts. So I think I'm going to add that to uh, filters, maybe? Let's see. I can just add a filter here saying all... <laughs> Lacquer mails. Uh, thank you. So, um, yeah, it's very important. Clean code. Let's see. That completely distracted me. I'm going to have a filter for all posts. And I guess I could check here. To see if it's all, then just return all posts. Um, that might be the easiest thing to do. It's probably a bunch of different ways I could do this. So if cat name, or I could create a different function for it, is all, then um, this dot post. Well, I've already set it to all posts here. So what I should actually do is if it's not all, then do the filter. So if it's all, it's already all posts. Yeah. Okay, this should work. These are really interesting plant names. Okay, HVAC, overhead doors, and now all. Sweet! All right, now I want to do a search. Um, let's search by title. I don't. I don't want to do some kind of deep search by every different field, but I think search by title would be good. So 
So I need another method and I'll call it search. And pass in a term and then somehow I need to search by title here. Or I guess I'll be doing the same kind of filtering. So it would be this dot posts um, equals this dot post dot filter. Oops. Filter and then post exactly the same thing. And here I'm gonna do return post. So post.category is a string. And can I do string includes or is that that is a string method, right? Let's do MDN string includes. I think I can use that. All right. Yeah, string includes. So I can do includes and this will be the post. No, 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 uh, this will be the term. Yeah, because this will also be a string and it should be a substring of the category. So I think that will work. I use view three right now. Um, it's, yeah, I haven't had any problems with view three and it's been in production for quite a while now. So I don't see any reason to not use view three. Yes, view three is absolutely production ready. There are some packages that are not yet, but for the most part, like right now I'm working on a view three uh, production app and I've been able to, yeah, I've been able to get all of the packages that I need so far. I'm using prime view, which is available in view three and some other libraries and it's been working great for me. Um, although some libraries aren't, won't be updated until the fall or winter this year, but overall, if you wanted to build a production app in V3, it wouldn't be like, you wouldn't find yourself wanting for libraries. Probably you'd probably have everything you need in V3 already. Okay. So let me hook up this search. Uh, I'm going to have to pass this into filters. and search so I can pass in this prop and then go over to filters and oh I do need to add a search field so let me make this properly so I'll do for search so you can do the label and the label will be search and then the input will be for the input then I guess the ID so it matches to the label will be search and then I need to V model this so if I V model I can just have a term which I'm going to create in a second. Oh, I forgot to close the input. All right. So I did the input. There's one more thing that I'm missing. Oh yeah. How do you submit it? So I'm going to, I'm going to just do an enter submit. So key can I do key up. Um, key up. I'm going to use the shorthand, so dot enter. So when the enter key is pressed, um, what do I want to do? I want to call search with the term. That's what I want to do. And I wish I had an auto formatter set up because I don't like putting these on different lines manually. There we go. Okay. 
using key press or on input would be better. I think they said not to use key press anymore, but I'll find out. I could use key down too. Um, yeah, let's see. Okay, so I have search, the input field, V model. I need to V model it somewhere. So let me do term. Now I have term. And also in props, I need to accept the search function as a prop. So search. All right, this feels nice to just code a little view. All right, so let me take a word distinct that I know is in one of these titles. Nope, nothing happened. Let's see. Um, search is not a function. Okay. Let's see. So I have search here in props. And I have it here. So it should work in the filters file. If I step through, I'm passing it into filters. And it is a method here. So it should be a function. And the first thing, I'm going to try refreshing it, see if that... No, I don't want that. Oh, okay. That's good. Uh, you don't have to do submit. You could use computed for the whole thing, a getter and setter. Yeah, that's true. I didn't think about that. Um, yeah, maybe I'll do that after. Okay, map, post. I wonder, so first let me reset the posts here, <clears throat> and I know it's only one line, but I think I'm going to put this in its own method. So I'm going to do this dot posts equals, just because I'm using it in multiple places now, mock data, okay. So here I'm going to do this dot reset posts and I'm going to replace that here too. So I think it makes it a little bit cleaner. <clears throat> so before I search or filter, I'm resetting them. Hey, Goffy Frags. Thanks for the follow. Okay, cancel that. So so why isn't this, well, for one thing, I probably want to do, yeah, I don't know. Let me see. Search. Oh, I'm doing it by category. I want to do it by title for one thing. And I do want to do two lowercase because I just, I don't want it to be case sensitive. So if I do post.title.to lower case, is that how you do it in JavaScript? Something like that. And then term.to lowercase. So that the why does it keep doing that? Um to lowercase. There we go. Okay. Saving app.view. Alright, well. Now let's see. Yes, okay, cool. Sweet, okay. So searching and filtering works. Um, you suggested computed. So let's see, if I were to do getters and setters on computed um, yeah I guess I would put I would definitely put it in the app component here so let me just try that so let me do a computed object and I could say 
filtered posts. And then here. Or no, no, no. If I'm doing a getter or setter, I have to I have to do this. And this would be get. And then I would do set. And get would just return this dot posts. And let's see, set would return this dot posts. And then um, I could filter. Yeah, I guess here, so if I do compute it, you could add a result array to data and push the result to it and loop the results. Yeah, so if I'm using a getter or setter here, so from computed, I can't call other methods. Um, so I would have to check, I would basically, if I wanted to search or filter, I have to include all the filter or search logic in the setter here. So I could do, yeah, let me add, I don't know. I'll just call it result because that's what you suggested. Results. Okay, so if I did this dot post dot filter, this is more of an academic, I guess, inter interesting thing that I'm thinking about right now. So, wait, why is it scrolling? Okay, so this dot post dot filter, and then I would have to check. So in set, I would need to pass in, and I think. When I'm setting, yeah, I can pass in, so I would need to pass in something like type, and that might be filter or search, and then string, and that would be either the category name or the term. And then either way, I'm filtering the same way, so I can just copy the same uh, filter logic and then in here I would check so if type is so I would have to do I guess if type is filter then so if type is filter then that um, else and it's kind of I'm checking every single time inside the loop so mm, I don't know I can probably make that a little bit better so else let me put this on the same line so if it's not filter I am assuming it's search so uh, then I would return well this line. There. Okay. And then term. So I'd have to replace this with string. This goes with string two. And then I would return results. So what do you think about this, this solution? Anyone have an opinion about this? Uh, return results and yeah and then I don't need to I don't need to do this because this is already in a array this is already an array um, and set actually so set I would well I would have to reset the data manually, so instead of calling this dot reset posts, um, which I think is a bit cleaner, I would have to do this. 
So, let's see. I'd have to do that. And then filtered posts. So let me just try this out real quick and then I'll probably go back to how it was before. Okay, and now if I, yeah, in here I'm gonna have to call, um, or I guess I could pass in filtered posts, but then I have to call it with, um, let's see, I need it in props, I'm gonna have to pass in yeah, filtered posts. And then let's just see for search. Oops. Okay. Oh, wait. Um, let's do filtered posts. And then I can pass in the term, but the first thing has to be filter. No, search. Yeah. Okay. And then it would be the same thing for this, except it would be uh, at click. And this would be filter. Uh, let's wait. Why is the term? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, because I copy pasted. Okay, I mean, let's just see if that works. Let's see what happens. I'm refreshing it now. Alright, and then I have to get to work. No. Um, I think actually what I'm doing is using the setter, the setter wrong incorrectly. So, here are the views. Vue.js docs. For some reason, this new content is available pops up every couple minutes. I don't know why. <coughs> um, let me look at computed. 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 Let me just search. Uh, Vue.js, I'm going to get there faster. So computed, get, and set. All right. Computed properties. This is in Vue 2, though. And I think... Actually, I don't think the getting and setting really changed. Mm. Okay, so computed setter. Here's a setter. Uh, this dot... Oh, so I'm not actually returning. Actually, they're mutating the data directly from the setter. I think that's what I need to be doing. Yeah, so maybe that's my issue then. Is because I don't remember getting an error. I still don't remember if I checked for errors. Um, let's see. Last name. Yeah, so I should. Uh, this dot post. So I should set this dot post then, because that's what I'm getting in my getter. This dot post equals results. Oops. Why isn't it saving? Okay. Let's see if that works. All right. Refresh one more time. And let's do. Um, oh 
Oh yeah, one thing I am doing though that I need to fix is let's see. Key filter key press enter. Yeah, this isn't just on key press enter. Now I wanna filter on any key. It's not filtering though. Let me take a look at the console. Yeah, filtered posts is not a function. So I don't know. Hey, Code and Garden fan, how are you? So when I call the setter, I have other examples of this on my GitHub actually, but let me see if I can find it here. Basically, I'm calling filtered posts and I think I need to call filtered posts.set. Maybe. Yeah, because filtered posts is an array if I'm using the getter. So is it something like set? Does anybody know? I'm just taking a stab at it. And then. Okay. Nope. Not read property set of undefined. Oh, so filtered posts is undefined. Um, let's see, why is it undefined? I'm probably not passing it in. Yeah, I'm not passing it into filters. Uh, okay. Let's see, let me clear that. Okay, and okay, filtered post is not a function. That's better. At least it's a new error. And I, I'm calling this the wrong way, but I'm just not sure how to call it, I guess. Let's see. Get answer. No, that's not it. I don't want. Okay, let me just look up Vue.js how to call computed setter. And if anyone has an idea in the chat, let me know. Oh, is there a button that said that? I didn't see it. Oh, don't ask. It doesn't even look like a button. It's just text. Thank you. <laughs> All right. I was like, that's annoying. Why wouldn't they put any button on there? How to call setter for object and computer properties. This is exactly what I want. All right. Yeah, here's the set, the set function. And oh, they're doing it with view X, but it should be the same idea. Um I need some mutation in your component. Setters only worked with direct assignment, just like regular JavaScript setters. Okay. Yes, but I want to know how to. Hey, drunk time lord, how are you? Oh, you gave an algorithms coding test to someone else. Was it off of leak code or what was the other one? Um, what was the other one I used to stream? I can't even remember now. Coding, not coding games, but. Um, was it code kata? No, they had katas, but yeah, I can't remember. Uh, via computed setter. Here, let me try this. I, f I feel like this should be in the documentation, but I didn't see it there.
Okay. Skip past all this stuff. Okay, I'm just figuring out this one last thing and then I'm gonna push. Oops. Binary. Uh, let me run this pen. Okay. Oh, so it's changing these. So I'm guessing this is the this must be the computed value. Let me look in here. Can you see this? Zoom in a little bit. Okay, so his computed binary. This is the getter. And then the setter. Okay, where he's updating that. That's good. And now from the HTML. Let's see. The input model pet dot selected. <clears throat> so form check label V model binary. Okay, so the input is V modeling, so that's using the getter to get the binary data. But how is it setting it then? Here it's the model pet dot selected. I really don't. See, am I crazy? I don't see anywhere where that's getting set. Um, and there's only one place. Oops. No oh, wait. I wanted it just inside the code pen, but. Yeah, there's only one place it's using binary. So how is it setting it then? The model pet dot selected, which is modeling to pet and pets here. Okay, so here are pets, pet dot selected. So why is? Oh, okay. I think I get it. Uh, because this is watching for changes to this dot pets inside the computed and so it runs but I'm still confused how it's calling the set function here why can't I remember how to do this so the set function is taking the binary string so where is it getting the binary string from var i for i in binary string dot length this dot pets dot selected and then it flips the bits here okay app is done take the binary string I could actually read the article okay to get a binary representation of this list Okay, to take the binary string and set our checkboxes, must loop through the string and set the selected properties properties accordingly. The app is done. All right, I'm gonna post this article. Or no, I just left the article. Um, let me copy. Copy link address. Yeah, if anyone wants to look at that. Um, I don't know. Okay, so in computed, I don't know why I'm getting stuck here. So in computed, I have a setter, and the setter does watch these internal variables. So if post change, if post changes, then it should run this setter again. So I guess that's how it was running in that other article. Basically, it was just waiting for changes. Like if inside computed I had this dot first name, anytime that changes, it would rerun um, the getter and setter. 
So, but the thing is, I want to call the setter with specific, um, with specific um, things, but I don't know if I can because it's not an actual function that I call. So I think what I'd have to do is update these things on data here and then my computed would watch for changes to the data. Does that make sense to anybody else? So I'd have to have something like, um, I don't know, string here. I can't think of a better name. And this would be either filter or search string. And then here, I think from the getter, that's what's passed into the setter. Or that's what it seemed like anyway. Um, set new value. Uh, alert this stuff. Yeah, new value. So this is from the getter. So I would basically get posts from the getter. And then um, yeah, I don't know if I need posts there, but anyway, I could get them. And then this would be this dot string. Oops, this dot string. And then I I don't know if there's any way. <coughs> okay, I guess I could set type here too, and I could make a type something here. So type would be either filter or, um, yeah, this is an interesting problem. Okay. That I wasn't expecting to do, but I kind of got in the weeds here. So then I could do, no, 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 not filter dot type. I would do this dot type to check the type, whether it's filter or search. And then I could do the same thing. So I think that that's how I would have to do it. And then from the child, I would need to be able to update these two properties. So then I would have to um, either do a special V model in the child, or I could just call a function in the parent to update the string and update the type. Um, yeah, I don't know if this is the best solution. It's definitely way more complicated than the thing that I originally had. So you can let me know what you think about this. I think I'm just gonna, for right now, cause I have to push code and start work. So I'm going to push this to the repo. And if you have any updates or suggestions, you can let me know. But I'm gonna take out what I did with computed. I'm just gonna comment this out actually. So if you wanna see it, you can. And let's see. Filters term. Da, 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 da. Yeah, I want to actually this file I'm just gonna do undo. Undo. Okay. And let me make sure my app is working so I don't push it when it's broken. Okay, that works. And the filtering works. So yeah, so this is a fully functional app. And then I left in the computed stuff that I did. So if you wanna to try to rehook that up and do something with it, you can. Yeah, so let me go ahead, stop the server, and I need to connect to my GitHub repo, actually. If you have any comments or suggestions or anything, then uh, join my Discord and go ahead and ask them over there or in the comments. I'm going to upload this video to YouTube pretty soon, too, so you can leave a comment over there. So git... Uh, commit 
no, no, git remote add origin the URL and then git, let's do git status. Okay, git add git commit dash m adding filtering and searching logic and post data. Okay, I think that's good. I, I already have a git ignore, so it shouldn't matter what I commit. And git push dash u origin master. And this should create everything in the repo here. Yep. All right, so this is the project. Here's the URL to this new repository that I made on GitHub. Um, I, oh yeah, I guess if you had some issue with this, go ahead and raise an issue so I know about it. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed the stream. I had fun streaming Vue again. That was cool, getting to try something out in Vue. It's been, I think, at least a month since I did a Vue stream. So, oh hey Seeker. It's good to see you. I was like, I'm streaming Vue, but I'm missing Seeker because you're usually in every Vue stream. But yeah, if you want to see, it's okay. I'm just ending it right now, actually. If you want to see more Vue or you have a suggestion for a Vue topic, I'm kind of looking for these smaller Vue topics that I can finish <laughs> in an hour, hour and a half, um, which are kind of fun to do and just, you know, figure something out. Um, and you know, I had this figured out and then someone in the chat says, what if you did it this way? So we got to try kind of two different ways of doing stuff. So I think that was fun. And yeah, if you haven't already, uh, join my discord, there's a view chat in there. So you, you can let me know if, uh, if you have a suggestion for one of these, again, kind of shorter view streams. My original view streams lasted, I don't, I think I have one view app that I was building that was 50 hours of streaming so far. It's not even done. So I want to kind of keep some of these contained. So yeah, uh, suggest shorter view streams for me. Yeah, post in my Discord, uh, Vanksay, and we can take a look at it. So thank you everyone. 